What's up everybody? Today we're going to be taking a look at the game Fog Escape from Paradise. Now in this game you're going to be controlling a group of islanders trying to get off this island and trying to escape this thick massive fog that is essentially taking over the island. So let's take a look at it. What you're going to be doing is you're going to have a certain set of islanders over here and you're going to be trying to move them onto these different boats into these different spaces. Uh, what's going to be happening in the game is the fog is going to be uh, creeping its way up the island and any of the islanders that get caught under the fog are going to end up out of the game. So what you're mainly going to be doing is you're going to be trying to move these islanders around um, in a mad rush to try to get to the different boats. Okay, so on the beach area, we've got to, I've gone ahead and set it up for a three-player game, and I'll go ahead and explain what's going on here. Um, the game is going to have what are called obstacles, and there's a, a few different types. You've got like a piece of wood here, a stone, and then a bush. And uh, the instructions are going to have a way to where you're going to be able to set this up. Uh, right over here, these two numbers, this is going to tell you how many obstacles are going to be in this area, and also the number of blank hex tile spaces that you're going to have. So this will be throughout each row. Um, now, you're also going to have different types of islanders in this game. Um, you're going to have a leader, which is going to be uh, the female over here. Everybody's going to get one of them. And you're also going to get what are called commoners, which are going to be two of the ladies over here with the pigtails. You're gonna, and then you're also going to have the eldest, the warriors, and then the sailors in this game. Anyway, what you're going to do is once you get your uh, leader and then two of the commoners, you're going to go ahead and by turn just pick whichever other characters that you want. And then what you're going to do is you're going to go ahead and just start placing them in order. So pink goes, then green goes, etc. And then you're going to go row by row until all the rows have been covered. Now, uh, on each of them, they're going to have a little symbol over here. And this is their special ability, which I'm going to talk about. Now, what you're going to be doing is you're going to be trying to move these characters up into the upper area where the boats are. This is the turn board. And uh, the way this is going to work is uh, anytime someone takes a turn, they're going to go ahead and move this down. And this is going to signify whose turn it is, uh, depending on what this cube is adjacent to. So right now it'll be yellow's turn. Then next time it'll be pink's turn. Uh, since we're doing a three-player game, um, is going to go ahead and go back to the second player. Now once this reaches this green space over here, this is going to move the fog up one. And so it'll just continue on like this throughout the entire game. Right over here, this is going to be your movement points board, and right over here, this is the key of the different movements that you, movements that you can do and how much they are going to cost. Um, and I'll talk about the movements later, but here's a particular one. This one just allows you to run, and that's going to count one movement point. This one will allow you to do a push, which will count for three movement points, and so on and for so forth. Now, you can uh, move whoever you want to uh, that is of your color, and you can kind of mix and match however you want to do these movements, whichever suits best for you. But once you get to seven, that's going to go ahead and end your turn. Okay, so there's six different types of movements that you can do. The first is going to simply be run, and what run is, that's going to cost one point. That just simply means going from one hex tile to the next like that, and each time you do that, that's going to cost one point. Uh, another one you have is what is called push. Push is going to cost you um, three points, and what a push is, is you're simply going to move your character up one into the next character, and then you're going to go ahead and push the characters in a line uh, in the same direction. Um, another thing you can do is what is called the squeeze, and a squeeze essentially means you're going to be squeezing between two things to get to the next space. So this would be a squeeze. The, um, the next thing you can do is you can do a swap. A swap is going to cost three points, and a swap simply means you're going to take an adjacent character and just switch positions with them like that. Um, next is the jump. Uh, just like in checkers, that's going to cost you three points, and you can go ahead and jump like that. And then the next thing is cross, and what cross means is this, this means climbing over an obstacle. Uh, so let's say I happen to have a character over here. This is going to cost four movement points, so I could just simply cross over like that. Now, each of the characters are also going to have a special ability, and they're going to be marked over here. And the special abilities are just going to be uh, things like run and push and squeeze, but they're going to just simply cost less to do. So, for example, uh, this character over here has the ability to push. Uh, so what that simply means is instead of paying the cost of three, they're going to go ahead and pay the cost of two to push. And if you look on this sheet over here, this is going to tell you how much the amount is normally, but if you have the special ability to do this, it's only going to cost you this much, and then this much, and this much, etc. Endurance, which is the characters that have a plus one on them, what that simply means is after you spent the seven points, if you have moved a character that has a plus one, you can go ahead and move them in extra space. 
You also have characters that have the number three on it. This simply means that if they want to squeeze or cross, it's only going to cost them three points. So just to kind of give you an example, let's just say it is Blue's turn. Uh, I could go ahead and move up for one point. I can do a push over here for three. That's going to give me four points. Um, let's say Blue continues to go. Uh, one thing I can do, let's say I go here for five. Um, let's say I decide I want to do a swap with somebody. So I could do for that for five. Now where the fog comes in is as you're moving along the board, anytime you move a green space, the fog is going to go ahead and move up. So I have the number nine over here and the number nine is going to be right here. So in this case, if I reach the fog, it's going to go ahead and move up and any Islander uh, that happens to get caught underneath it, you're going to go ahead and uh, simply just turn their token over like so. And um, you're going to go ahead and place the fog on there and they're going to be out of the game. Now, once you get the characters to the upper section over here, things are going to change just a little bit. Um, if you're going to transfer over to the beach and the shore, your, your movement is going to be a little bit limited. But once you're able to get into the water, uh, you will be able to run and you will be able to do swaps and things like that. But you're not going to be able to do things like push or things like that. But you're, everything is going to be one movement point from here on out. So another thing you can do is you can jump over characters like this. Um, so in order to get into the boat, a couple of things. Number one, if you have, a, you're going to try to have to match up with the character that is on the boat. Now, right over here, these are called boat points. So at the end of the game, if you happen to have a character over here, in this case, you're going to get this amount of points at the end. So um, they also have the stern. And uh, in this area, this is going to be a number here. This t will tell you how many people will be allowed in this area. Uh, these are specific for each character. So if I could go like one and then two, and then let's just say I went three, I would go ahead and get that character in there. And then once they're in the boat, uh, you can't move them again. Uh, if you want to enter the stern, all you have to do is you just simply have to go uh, like that. Also, uh, anytime you enter the boat, you're going to go ahead and take one of these tokens over here. Um, and each of these are going to have a little different value. This is six points. Uh, the next player that goes in there, let's just say this person goes in there, they'll get five points, for example. Uh, now, another way you can score points is by the color of the boat. Um, the nation, in this case, is blue. So I have a blue character in here, so you're going to be able to get points that way as well. But ultimately, what you're trying to do is you're trying to get as many characters into the boat as you can, and you're going to lose points anytime you end up losing points to the fog. Um, and the way that works is like these two characters, for example, since Black lost these, they're going to lose nine points per character. And then when it gets up here, it'll be eight, then seven, then six, etc. Uh, but once you've gone ahead and you've gotten in all the places people in the boat have been placed, um, you can actually have people over here on the pier, for example, and that's going to count because they'll be clinging to the boat as the boat sails off. Um, but the boat is only going to be able to sail off once you have, if these spaces over here have been filled up. But anyway. Um, what you'll do is once you've got all these spaces filled up and you've got all the characters off the island as best you can and uh, there's no more movement left, what you're going to do is you're going to count up your points. All right, so for the scoring, any character you have that is, uh, th that is in the same color boat, you're going to receive four points for that, and these are called rescue points. And you also get points for the boat area. So um, for this character, he's going to get seven points. This character will get seven points and so on. Um, you're also going to lose points to the fog, so you're going to go ahead and count those points, and they're going to be negative points. And then any of the preparation bonuses that you've gotten, these little chips are going to count up as well. So the winner is going to be the one that ends up with the most amount of points. And that, folks, is the game Fog Escape from Paradise. So my final thoughts on Fog Escape from Paradise. Well, now, anybody who is a fan of abstract games, I would definitely recommend checking out. One thing I really like about this game is it really gives you the feel of a bunch of people who are trying to escape with the running, with the jumping, with literally pulling people back and swapping places with them. Um, all these movements and stuff would simulate uh, a situation like that, and I think it's really cool the way they do it. Uh, there's several different ways you can score in this game. You've got the boat scoring, you've got the preparation bonuses, um, and those can change uh, depending on the game as well. And uh, it's cool. I like it. Um, the fog definitely adds an element of suspense um, because a lot of times what I have seen is that people are going to swap and try to get up and just try to move in a lot of different ways just trying to get their pieces out of there. And there's so many different ways you can move. So it's pretty cool. But just a really good idea, I think. And uh, 
I hope that uh, they end up coming up with an app like some of these uh, game companies are doing that have like some music in the background or uh, even maybe a timer effect or something like this game also has timers so you can actually flip them over and you only have that amount of time to plan your moves and if you don't you're going to lose some moves. Um, it also has a solo variant and also has some other variants in there that you can add and mix and mingle to the game. So uh, I like this game and I would recommend it to anybody that is a fan of abstract games and games that give you suspicion suspense and just have a really good in my opinion just a really good um, interpretation of a mass amount of people trying to get off an island to avoid a fog anyway guys that's my review of fog escape from paradise we'll catch you later keep on gaming